Okay, so this was one of the last practice exercises that we went over last week before spring break. Again, we're talking about, we're covering chapter 15. We're looking at weak acids. Again, how do you know if an acid is weak? It's not one of the six strong acids that you memorized. So you should all have your chapter 15 equation sheet out from your study guide. Remember the strong acids, strong bases are listed there. So just a quick review to kind of get warmed up for lecture today. We're looking at a weak acid. I know this is a weak acid because I'm asked to find a Ka. So weak acids um, have Ka values. Strong acids, because they dissociate 100%, do not. Um, so we'll, we use ice boxes for these type of problems because you have a Ka. You have an initial acid molarity. You have a pH, which is essentially your X value. That tells you to use an ice box. So look over your notes from lecture last week. We went over this. Um, refresh, redo this, this practice exercise before you watch this lecture because we will be building on these same concepts in our practice exercises for today. Moving on to new material, so calculating percent ionization. The first thing we have to learn when we want to try and figure out how to calculate a percent ionization is what is the definition of a percent ionization. So percent ionization is defined as our hydronium molarity at equilibrium divided by our initial acid molarity times 100 to make it a percent. So let's see. Um, in the formic acid example, and this was a practice exercise, I think two, two slides ago, you, were, you solved for a hydronium and equilibrium molarity. You were given an initial acid molarity. So we can just plug them in to solve for the percent ionization. So again, hydronium and equilibrium, 4.2 times 10 to the negative third divided by our initial acid molarity times 100. Plug that into your calculator, make sure you can do this. 4.2%. So formic acid is a weak acid because it's not one of six that we memorized. We can also see its percent dissociation, which is essentially the same as a percent ionization, just a different way of describing it, is significantly less than 100%. In fact, it's only 4.2%. So if you're asked to solve for a percent ionization, depending on what you're given, you may or may not need to use an ice box. Let's go ahead on to the next practice exercise. Practice exercise nine. You're given a 0 0.020 molar solution of niacin. You're told it has a pH of 3.26. I know that niacin is an acid from this problem. I saw it before, but from, from this problem, because the pH is less than 7, that tells me my solution here is acidic, calculate the percent ionization of niacin. Okay, so take a few minutes. Based on that slide we just talked about, try to solve this on your own. So go ahead, hit pause, solve the problem, hit play, and once you've solved it, we'll go back over it together. Okay, so thank you for pausing and solving the problem. Let's look at this together. We're asked to get a percent ionization. The very first thing you should have written down is the definition of percent ionization. Remember, it's your H3O plus at equilibrium divided by the initial acid molarity times 100 to make it a percent. So our, remember from our pH definitions, our H3O plus at equilibrium is the same as 10 to the negative pH. And what do you know? You're given a pH so we can get this hydronium at equilibrium molarity without using an ice box, really important. You're also told in the problem, the molarity of the niacin, which is your initial acid molarity or your HA initial. Percent ionization is then, just plugging in those numbers, 10 to the negative 3.26 divided by 0 0.020. So make sure you use parentheses when necessary with your calculator um, times 100 to make it a percent and that equals 2.7%. So what does that tell us? That tells us that this acid, a 0 0.020 molar solution of niacin, percent ionization is only 2.7%. That means that we have mostly reactants, not many products. Okay, so now let's look at practice exercise 10. And this is the practice exercise that we covered in lecture on Wednesday before spring break. I jumped ahead to practice exercise 10. I went over it fairly quickly because I wanted you to have this 
problem solving tool for you to use as you worked on your homework over spring break. I know you've all been spending all week studying chemistry. So if you did, so hopefully you were in lecture on Wednesday before spring break, look over this practice exercise. So hit pause, look over the practice exercise, hit play again, and we'll then look at practice exercise 11 together. Okay, practice exercise 11. This is nearly identical to practice exercise 10, just different numbers. So if you missed lecture on Wednesday, we'll be going over this together, step by step. Here you're given a Ka for niacin, 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. Um, and I know that niacin in this problem is an acid because you're given a Ka value. Again, the only time you have a Ka value is if you're talking about a weak acid and you're asked to solve for the pH of a 0.010 molar solution of niacin. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get you started on this problem by thinking about the first three steps and I want you to pause, solve, hit play, and we'll go over it together. So in this problem, I'm given a Ka, I'm asked to find a pH, and I'm given an initial acid molarity. So again, weak acid ice boxes, pH, Ka, initial acid molarity. You'll be given two, and you're asked to find the third. The steps for our ice box, the same essentially as chapter 14. Number one, write your hydrolysis reaction and Ka expression. So in chapter 14, step one was write down your reaction and your Ka expression. Chapter 15, the reaction's not given to you. You just know what species are in your beaker. So what's in your beaker? Niacin and water. I know there's water in there because it's a 0 0.010 molar solution. That means it's a mixture, a homogeneous mixture of acid and water. So I like you to, I want you to think, step one, write hydrolysis reaction. If you can remember that word hydrolysis, it will help you remember that the other reactant of this reaction is water. Okay, A expression, remember products of a reactants. Don't include H2O because it's a liquid. Step two. ICE, just like chapter 14. Step three, think, how do I solve for X? Okay, so go ahead, hit pause. Even if you weren't here for lecture last time and haven't in practice exercise 10, still hit pause. Get this problem set up. Solve the math. Once you finish, come back, listen to my work, see if you've done it correctly. Again, you'll learn, get a lot more out of lecture if you work on the problem before I go over it. Okay, so pause. Okay, so let's go over this together. Step one, hydrolysis reaction. So what does that mean? Your weak acid, HA, we do not care what it is, what the chemical formula is, just that it's a weak acid. That means it's got a acidic hydrogen, reacts with water, again, our hydrolysis, in equilibrium. Your acid is a proton donor. The water is a, the, your base, weak base, proton acceptor to make hydronium, and the conjugate base, A minus. So your Ka expression products hydronium times A minus the conjugate base divided by our initial acid molarity. Again, we do not include water in this expression. Step two, ICE. Initial. Well, we're told, we are told the molarity of the acid is 0 0.010 molar. That's always your initial value. The molarity of any acid that's written on the bottle that is always the molarity of the acid before any dissociation occurs. Or you could think about it this way. If you are going to make a solution of this molarity, you could use stoichiometry and calculate you know, how many moles of acid do you have, use the molar mass, how many grams of the solid acid would you dissolve in water. So that's always your initial molarity. Nothing is mentioned about hydronium or, or the conjugate base, therefore they're both zero change, just like we learned in chapter 14, minus x for the reactants, plus x for the products. I can see it's a one to one to one mole ratio, as it always will be with our Ka reactions. Then I plus C gives you equilibrium, 0 0.010 minus x at equilibrium. Again, water is a liquid. It's not included in your Ka expression. It's also not included in your ice box. And then 0 plus x is obviously x. So I can see that the molarity of the hydronium at equilibrium 
is the same as the molarity of the conjugate base at equilibrium. So now, step one, hydrolysis reaction Ka expression. Step two, ICE. We're on to step three, think how do I solve for X? So what are we given? We're given, we wanna find a pH. We're given the initial molarity, I use that. We're also given the Ka value, we have not used that yet. So that is how we will solve for X. In some of the previous problems we did uh, the week before spring break, you were given a pH, and remember the pH allowed you to solve for X because um, pH is a negative log of H3O plus, or H3O plus equals 10 to the negative pH. But here, we're given Ka, so that's how we're going to solve for X. Ka, 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, equals products, right, X times X, which is X squared, divided by reactants, 0 0.010 minus X, and now what I'm going to do, I talked about this in lecture last Wednesday, we're going to assume that x is small. So right now, this again, one equation, one unknown. In chapter 14, we went over this, solving for this equation using the quadratic formula, which we're all capable of doing. However, when x is really small, we can assume that it is 0 because 0 0.010 minus a really, really, really small number, like 0 0.010 minus 0 0.000001, rounded to two sig figs is still 0 0.010. So that's why this is valid. We'll learn how to check it next. When is X going to be small? Well, X stands for the hydronium at equilibrium. So when is X small? If your K value is small, because if K is small, that means you have mostly reactants, very few products. If you have very few products, that means you don't have much hydronium. So X is small. Initially, if we have a weak acid problem, X is probably small. Probably 95% of the time, this approximation will be valid. When it, if the approximation is not valid, you'll go back solving this equation with the quadratic formula. So we're taking X to zero. Y, our goal is to avoid the quadratic formula. So now this becomes 1 times 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth equals X squared over 0 0.010. So now, this equation is very simple algebra to solve. We're going to get x by itself by multiplying both sides by 0 0.01 and then taking the square root. So x is 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth times 0 0.01, and then that entire thing, the square root, or to the 1 half power. That was just easier for me to type into PowerPoint. So make sure you can get this on your calculator also. x equals 3.87 times 10 to the negative fourth. So now we solve for x. The very next thing we have to do is check. Is x really small? Is it actually small compared to the number it was being subtracted from? So in this case, I'm subtracting x from 0 0.01. So that's what I need to check. Is x smaller than 0 0.01? How do I do that? I take x, which is my 3.87 times 10 to the negative fourth, divided by the number it was being subtracted from times 100 to make it a percent. So 3.87 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 0 0.01 times 100 equals 3.87%. What does that mean? That tells us, yes, X is indeed small. It's called the 5% rule that we're following. As long as X is 5% or less com compared to the number it's subtracted or added to, the, this approximation is valid. What is this approximation? Making this X zero. Um, I say added or subtracted to because right here we're subtracting x from a number. In some of the future examples, we might be adding x to a number, and we can use the shortcut also. Questions I oftentimes um, get from students, you know, why do we make this x small? Why not? The, why do, does this x go to zero? How about this x? The reason that we can take this x to zero is because a number minus a really, 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 really small number is still that same number. But if you have a small number and you square it and you divide something by it, that has a huge impact on it. So the only x that you take to zero is when you're subtracting it or adding it from a number. What would happen if x was, of, was greater than 5% of the number it was being added or subtracted to? You'd go back to this form and you would solve the quadratic formula. Okay, we solve for x. We determined that x is indeed small, so our shortcut is valid. Have we solved the problem yet? Well, no. The question is, what is the pH of the solution? I've solved for x, so now we have to think again. 
well, what, what does X stand for? How do I get pH? So the advantage of, one of the many advantages of using an ice box, you have your reaction right here. Set up these numbers in columns. Oftentimes I see reactions written on one side of the page, an ice box somewhere else. Don't take shortcuts. Um, by writing this out, you're much more likely to solve the problem correctly, especially as you get more challenging problems presented to you. I see X stand for our conjugate base molarity. It also stands for the, con the hydronium molarity at equilibrium, right? Equilibrium. Well, what is my pH? Remember, pH is just the negative log of your hydronium at equilibrium, which is the negative log of X. So here our pH equals 3.41. Sig figs. I've got two sig figs for my Ka, two sig figs for my molarity. So for my pH, I've got two digits past the decimal point. Look at that chapter 15 equation sheet. I have a reminder on your rules for sig figs when you're using logs and exponents. Make sure to review those if you don't remember them from our last lecture. Um, okay, quick recap. You have a weak acid. You know it's a weak acid because your Ka is given. You want to find a pH and you're given your molarity. So remember, a K value, initial molarity, the pH is something you obtain at an equilibrium value. That tells you to use an ice box. Step for the ice boxes, hydrolysis reaction, Ka expression. Why hydrolysis? Because what's in your beaker? It's just that weak acid in water. I, C, E, and then think, how do I solve for X? Well, in this case, you're given a Ka, so you can solve for x using that Ka. We make x zero in order to avoid the quadratic formula. Check to make sure x is small. As long as x is 5% or less, it is small. If it wasn't, you would go back and do the quadratic formula to solve for x. And then lastly, pH, negative log of x because my x value does indeed Solve for my hydronium, or stand for my hydronium at equilibrium, and pH is negative log of x. Okay, so we're going to stop here for today. I will be posting a couple other short lectures over the next several days. Again, because our Monday lecture is canceled, you'll have video lectures instead because I'm in interviews all day long. So um, please continue to work on your homework. Continue to do practice problems in the back of the book if you want more. You know, more problems in addition to the Mastering Chemistry that's online. Any questions that you have from this lecture, please post them on Facebook and I will log on periodically and answer questions that you have.